Hi everyone, this is Anna from amirujinet.com channel. Today in this tutorial we will learn together how to install Microsoft Exchange Server 2013 on a Windows Server 2012 R2. To do that actually we will need to fulfill some prerequisites so I will split this video into multiple small parts actually so that it can be easier uh, to watch. We will need uh, a Windows Server with domain controller role installed and Active Directory uh, domain installed and we will need another server where we, where we will install our exchange server that we need to join it to our domain so currently it's not joined to the domain we will do it in a while in, in a few minutes now I want to just check our domain controller as you can see here this is the server manager dashboard all the roles I I got some roles installed here all the roles are up and running Let's verify the internet connectivity. Sometimes there's no ID. The icon shows limited, but in reality, it can connect to the internet fine without any issues. I will make it full screen so that you can have better visibility. Try to. I'll try to open Microsoft.com for example. Great, and as you can see, it's opening fine, and here it turned. It turned to be fine, as you can see here. If I hover on, it says I'm Ruginet.com. It's connected to my domain. Everything is good. One thing to mention here: this computer has two IP addresses the IP address for the public uh, interface which is connected to my home router uh, it's connected through a DHCP I think it's connected through DHCP anyway but I have another uh, interface for the internal network with a static IP address so that the DHCP can lease the IP address for this interface that serves as a router for NATing the to do the NAT for the internal the machine in the internal network, which is a 10.1.1.0 in my case, with a mask of 24. As you can see here, so I got the remote access role installed. So this is what's giving the NAT the internet connectivity to the computers or servers in the internal network of 10.1.1.0 10 10 this is just a virtual lab by the way in reality it would be a router which is doing the NAT Cisco or other so this is my computer my uh, other server sorry where we will be installing the exchange server let's check the details I go to properties, IPv4 properties. If you realize this one, I gave in purpose a static IP address because this is a server. With a server, it's going to be a fixed, uh, it's going to be a role that would be serving clients, so it has to be a static IP address that doesn't need to change every time actually, so not to cause uh, interruption of service or issues within our, our network but if it was a workstation I will simply uh, let the settings by default which is set in Microsoft environment to be uh, automatically uh, on DHCP okay so now let's join so this first check if we do have internet connectivity here I will go to apple.com for example 
yes I can connect to Apple without any issues that's fine okay so here to connect our server to Active Directory then it becomes uh, a server member of the domain so all I need to do I hope oh, sorry I will redo it so you can just click on the start menu in the search type system okay and you probably go to this one which says system that's it it will open the system config it gives you some information about our server so it's 64-bit uh, uh, between 12 R2 it comes in 64-bit only and the exchange server starting from 2020 and above it's a 64-bit application you cannot install it on a 32-bit application so what I did I came here to the right uh, to the left hand side and I clicked on advanced system settings and here I selected the tab of computer name here it says to rename this computer or change its domain or recruit click on change this one I'm gonna do I will change the radio button to domain and I will type my domain name amrujinet.com uh, I hit enter so it will ask me to I will be prompted to enter an account that has permissions to join computers or servers to the domain I created a user named amruji which has which is member of uh, admins group and I enter the password and I click OK and as you can see here welcome to the amruji.com domain I have to restart of course save any changes I don't need to change anything everything is good and I'm gonna restart now restart shouldn't take that long our server should come up soon so let's take advantage and explore some of the roles installed in our domain control server as you can see here I have a DHCP server let's check our DHCP uh, this is a good thing to mention actually when I installed the DHCP and DNS roles, uh, my server, the server I'm, I'm currently working on, was not a was not promoted to domain control yet. So, as soon as I created my DHCP, uh, as I added my DHCP roles, everything was good. And by the way, I have another video in my channel showing uh, how to install DSCP and DNS roles uh, using PowerShell commands you can check it it's it's very useful so when I uh, added the DHCP role it started serving clients right away as soon as I mentioned that the state is active everything was working good but one thing happened and one thing to to mention whenever you promote a server to domain control role and install Active Directory services you need to do something an extra step in order that your DHCP would be able to serve uh, workstations and start leasing addresses you need to authorize your DHCP server it's easy how to do it you just click on the server node you go to action as you can see here I have unauthorized right now but before when I just promoted my server and I opened my DSCP for the first time I had here the option to authorize if you do if you do unauthorize actually those two scopes for IPv4 and IPv6 will not have a green check mark it will have probably an arrow 
a red arrow going down, which is which means that the service is down. You can uh, not the service is down, but the DHCP is unauthorized. As a result, it cannot lease addresses. So this is my scope. It's uh, the internal server of 10.1.1.0 internal network. The address pool. So I asked my DSCP to lease addresses only from the range 10.1.1.10 till 10.1.1.50 address leases that are none because uh, my address server is working uh, on static IP mode scope options I usually use these three critical options which is the router that will allow allow my uh, internal network workstations or servers to connect to the internet and connect to our server actually the DNS server which is the same as my domain controller and the domain name now let's check our DNS server okay as you can see here I have a couple of names here this one by the way I need to change it because that was another host I need to change the address for my new my new one or I will leave it like that so what I will do I just delete this one as you can see here I have some A records some aliases and it should be working good now if I go back to my other server technically now it should be my other user so here it says sign in so I'm Ruginet I don't need to enter the domain I will try to log in with the same user that I used to join this server to, dom to the domain and it's joining fine My server manager will start soon so I will just go and double check if the DNS usually the DNS uh, server works perfectly if the addresses are leased using DHCP but I'm wondering if it's gonna work or I need to add a record for my server manually so let's refresh the whole server from the server node it does look like it's there I can I can always add it so we are going to modify the size of the interface I need to log off now okay let's do it so I will log back in Just double check. What's my computer name? Yeah, C A S C C M E X E X for exchange. Okay, let's let's check. Yeah, probably I need to add it. That's fine. Or I'll just do update the data file server. No, never happened, that's fine. So, new host. See, uh, CCM. Uh, EX. So, the address was 150. Uh, I will just double check. Make sure it was 110. Is it? That's strange. Okay, let's check. Let's see what's the address. Details. Yeah, it was 110. So I don't know, it was correct. For some reason I I deleted it. So it was correct. Okay. 
can create an associated pointer record has been created successfully okay that's great so now let's try if we can ping our server screen for screen so here I go IP sorry I'll make the uh, font bigger so that you can have better visibility let's make it 16 for example and bold fonts I hope it's better now you can fake yes I do have so let's ping my server yes I can ping it fine let's check our DNS and let's look up so for example if I do ftp dot com great as you can see this gives me the host name of the uh, rec a record of my uh, domain controller which is DC server and it gives me the alias and the address of my server so as you can see here everything is working fine and I should see you soon in the next in the part 2 for the prerequisite of our exchange server thank you for watching I wish you a good day